Thanks, Concorla. Um, I think this is actually a hugely important issue in terms of the interaction between GSOC and the Gardaí and where difficulties emerge. Now, obviously, this was uh, a huge area under the old commissioner and indeed the old minister, um, where the perception and reality, I would say, was that in case of a conflict between GSOC and senior garden management, namely the, the old commissioner, that the former minister sided very much with on Garda Siakana to the detriment of, of GSOC. And I do think that was vindicated by the stance that, uh, unfortunately, we even had the Garda representative organisations allegedly at the behest of the uh, former commissioner issuing public statements uh, stating their lack of confidence in GSOC, urging their members to have nothing to do with GSOC, uh, etc. This is obviously completely unacceptable in a scenario where we're dealing with what is, in effect, the Garda, the old Garda Complaints Board, or a mechanism for the public to have uh, Garda accountability. So I do think it's important, and there needs to be somebody somewhere who steps in and compels behaviour or compels the handing over of documents. I mean, a cursory glance at the annual report of GSOC over the last two years, particularly the one the year before last would show inordinate delays in the handing over of documentation for no valid reason, ridiculous statements being sent back from Garda stations to GSOC with stuff like, uh, well, why do you want to know when they're clearly under an obligation or saying, no, you're not entitled to this when clearly they are, uh, just blatant disregard for the procedures, then somebody somewhere needs to uh, step in. And I think a process of independent adjudication is, uh, is important. And when we look at admissibility, I do think we need to extend the, the um, boundaries there. And I think some of the points in the, the first motion of the, of the batch that we're discussing broadens uh, that area. But we also need to broaden who's involved in it, and, and I, it isn't covered in the amendment, but the fact that retired Gardaí are excluded from GSOC, and I don't think there's any plan of changing that at the moment, is clearly regrettable. Because what people feel has happened in a number of cases where, if you like, the noose was tightening or the wolf was at the door, suddenly uh, the um, member uh, involved in the complaint is basically told to step aside, they'd be better off retiring now, and once you retire, you escape any sort of sanction. And I think that is, is a real difficulty, because when we talk about the interaction of GSOC and Angarda Siakana while complaints are being processed, we also need to look at that in terms of what's going on outside. And I don't think it's any secret, we might as well mention the case that's been mentioned on numerous occasions here, but the tragic death of Shane O'Farrell, whose mother Lucia has obviously been uh, championing uh, that case in light of the fact that the man who, who killed her son in uh, that driving incident had a whole number of fraudulent insurance um, had obtained his insurance by fraudulent means, had a whole number of convictions which were never uh, revealed to the court. And the problem that this family are experiencing, having gone now, and currently GSOC is investigating criminal complaints in 40, 59 admissible complaints in the public interest under Section 102 in relation to this case, and yet one of the senior Gardaí in the handling of that case was actually promoted at a certain stage. And they feel that that's a disconnect there, that how can you have 59 admissible complaints of a criminal character being investigated on the one hand, and on the other, somebody who's involved in that process being promoted. And it's this interface that we need uh, to deal with. It is a, a source of unbelievable stress for, for the citizens uh, involved in this. And I, I don't think it, it, it does the Gardaí uh, any good either. So I, I think some independent adjudication with teeth is, is really necessary, and particularly with regard to the handing over of uh, documents, because sometimes the experience is that um, there's a sort of a, a shutting down if a complaint is made against the guard, that they get kind of lawyered up uh, and go into a confrontational uh, scenario, and uh, there needs to be something there that, that untangles that uh, as best as possible. So I think the um, amendments are, are well made and, and very valid.